Today we're going to be talking about the Leviathan. The Leviathan happens to be some type of ancient sea serpent or a dinosaur of some kind. I mean, that's the usual description that we get. But if you go and look at the description of it, it happens to be much more than that. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going over the most in-depth study of the Leviathan, and we're going to compare it all throughout the Bible. So for starters, this is a little bit outside. This is kind of an introduction. But if you look at the satanic symbol, it has the word Leviathan all around the edges. This is right over here. This spells out Leviathan. And it's such a strange type of word to go and give to the satanic symbol. And I mean, the first look at the Leviathan, you may think maybe it's some type of serpent. Maybe it's some type of ancient thing. I mean, it does say it has powerful limbs, does it not? It says powerful limbs. But then it also talks about how he has sharp teeth. Like a breakdown on iron and copper as if it's just straw or rotten wood. It describes him as being in the water because he says, can you go in and pull it up with the fish hook? Is that, is that even possible? Now the Leviathan here also says there's a rose in the back, like rows of shields, kind of like scales on his back. And it's very airtight that he, cause, that his eyes are like light, like torches. That... When he sneezes, he sneezes out flames that he breathes out fire. And I have a question. What does that sound like? It's a dragon. There is an actual dragon written about in the Bible. In fact, this dragon lives in the water. He is a water dragon, kind of like Godzilla. That sounds crazy, but it's true. So Godzilla is pretty much a good description of what the Leviathan is. Now, there is a big difference, though. There's a big difference. The difference is that this creature that's described in Job chapter 41, he almost seems to have, like, human-like characteristics. He says he looks on everything that is high. So he's looking up on high. He's looking up on high. He's looking up on high. And he happens to be the kings of all the sons of pride, which is a strange description to give to a animal. But what I like about this, it, it reminds me of Isaiah chapter 14 where they talk about the devil, the serpent the, of Satan. He says, oh, how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of, the mor of son of dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. So we see that this creature is laying low the nations and bringing them down. He says, you have said in your heart, I will, see, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God and will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon, which is actually Mount Zion where God lives. I will ascend to the top of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high, but you are brought down to the realm of the dead to the depths of the pit. So we see here that this king over all the sons of pride is always looking on up. He's always looking up, which sounds very similar to the Leviathan, the king of the sons of pride. Now let's go back to Genesis. Now, is the creature, is the serpent in Genesis the same Leviathan creature that we are talking about? I mean, let's, let's go read the curse, at least. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life and you're like oh it can't be because it doesn't have powerful limbs well for starters when god told adam and eve that you will surely die they thought they're gonna die right away did it happen no it took some time i mean it did happen but it took time now for the serpent were his limbs taken away right away it doesn't describe it but at the same time it didn't describe whether or not adam and eve was going to die right away but look at this. He says, I will put enmity, which is conflict, between you and the woman, between your offsprings and hers, and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So we see here that there's a cosmic conflict between the woman, which happens to be the church, and the dragon, the serpent. If you look at Revelation 12, that conflict is actually unfolding. We see the woman running away from the dragon into the wilderness, and the dragon is trying to flush her out with water with water now the serpent is also known as the deceiver now i want you to go and focus in on this passage i want you to focus in on this passage in genesis chapter 3 verse 15 he says he will crush your head you see that your head and you will strike his heel the word heel in hebrew is yaakov or the word jacob 
The reason why he's called Jacob is because when he was born, he grabbed on his brother's uh, es Esau's heel and came out. So we see the word heel here, but the but this word Yaakov has two meanings. It is dualistic. I mean, we have that word in English as well. Example, hey, I'm going to go right. I'm turning right. Hey, I am right, as if I'm correct. Hey, I'm turning left. Hey, I left that behind. You see how the same word has two meanings? So Yaakov has two meanings too, which both means heel and deceiver. So we see here that the main method of attack of the devil is to deceive. Now, this deceiver, according to Ephesians, this is the New Testament now. The New Testament. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. He says, he Paul is writing to the believers. He says, look, don't, no, stop following the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, which is where they live in the atmosphere, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So we see that there's some type of ruler that is ruling this world in heaven before and he also states, Jesus says this statement. He says, the rule of this world now stands condemned, which is crazy. Because we always think God is in charge of everything, which is true. But the, there's a ruler of this world. And this ruler happens to be ruling in heaven and controlling everything until he apparently loses his place. And this is what happens in Revelation chapter 12. In fact, remember, the, the serpent, the dragon happens to be going after the woman in Revelations. And eventually he loses his place when? When there's a war that broke out in heaven. There's a Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Michael and his archangels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. And the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil. Remember, this is an ancient serpent. The ancients are called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray with deception. You see that? This is deception. He was hurled down to the earth and his angels with him. So the question that comes to mind is what was the devil doing before when he was in power? Was he ruling? You know, was he actually ruling? So remember, Job happens to be the key book that we're doing this study in. Job chapter 1 sets up a premise of this divine council in heaven, this divine council on Mount Zion. And it says, one day the sons of God, I know in some trans it says the angels, but it states the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan says, the Lord answered the Lord from roaming throughout the the earth going back and forth on it. Now, the real question is, why was he there? In fact, if you look at the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Adam, I'm going to go and uh, go to Genesis chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. It talks about, it's a genealogy. Uh, they didn't have last names, so they would say, um, like a name, the son of this guy, you know? So we see here, it says, Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathath, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So we see here that the son of God is supposed to be none other than Adam until he had lost his place. We see here that in Isaiah, it also stated that, that the devil said, I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high. So let's go look at ancient religions in every single continent. How about that? The Tiamat. The Tiamat in the, Enu in the Enuma Elish is a water dragon or a serpent that wages war and loses. This is the Kulkakan. This is in Mexico. If you've ever been to Chichen Itza, you will notice that there are serpents everywhere. That they are everywhere. In fact, this winged serpent is a winged serpent happens to be able to fly and it flew to the sun, but he tried to speak to it, but in its pride, burned his tongue. And the Mayans believe that the Kukukan has a human form as well. A contemporary of Kukukan happens to be the Quetzalcoatl, the Aztecian feathered serpent, who lost against a jaguar. Kind of interesting because we see that the serpent 
in the Bible loses against none other than the Lion of Judah, which is Jesus. So that's pretty cool. This is the this is the Bukunawa in the Austronesian people. The Austronesians are the ancestors of the of the Filipinos. So this is Philippine mythology, and the Bukunawa is a serpent-like dragon, and it's believed to cause eclipses, earthquake, rains, and winds. So it's another serpent water dragon, and the Bukunawa happens to be none other than Thailand. So if you look in Thailand, a lot of their temples are dragons. Some of them have multiple heads as well. So we see that there is some type of uh, connection that is there. If you look in Africa, there's this thing called the Ida Wado, which is a rainbow serpent of wind, water, fire. And they're kind of like snake-like creatures, and it is known as the rainbow serpent. It's, pre it's presented in Nigeria, Benin, and Togo as well. This is in Japan. This is the Watsumi or the Ryujin, which is the legendary water dragon as well. Uh, another name for the dragon is called the Awatsumi no Kami, which means the great god of the sea. So we see here that even in Spirited Away, that there is a water dragon as well. So in America, the Native Americans, this is called the Avenue. You'll see them. Uh, painted on in zigzags in the caves in New Mexico and Arizona. This is a horned serpent of the water. It is the guardian of the water. And you're thinking, hey, uh, you forgot about like Australia. What about Australia? Well, Australia actually has it too. Australia, the Aborigine mythology, believes that a rainbow serpent happens to be the creator god that, came, that, fell, for, that fell from heaven and pretty much just gave them everything and he says he will crush your head but look at this he will crush your head and you will strike his heel remember that his heel he will crush your head you will crush your head so is that supposed to be happening absolutely this is in psalm chapter 74 verse 14 you crush the heads of leviathan you see that you could have more than one head so you crush the heads of leviathan and he gave him as food to the creatures of the wilderness so we see that there is a fight going on between Jesus and the serpent, and he crushes his head. So the Leviathan happens to be a enemy of God. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there's this thing called eschatology. Eschatology means end time prophecy, and there's always a pre-wording for that. There is a shadow, a foreshadow of it, and it's that wording in that day. In that day is always the day of judgment. In that day, the Lord... Who's that? Jesus will punish the Leviathan, the fleeing serpent with his what? This fierce and great and mighty sword, even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. So we see here from this that the Leviathan is none other than the devil himself. I know a lot of people are wondering, are you serious? Right now, is the Leviathan actually the, serp the the dragon? Absolutely. Even in the Old Testament, it describes him as the dragon, the ancient serpent who lives in the sea. And we see him coming to an end in the book of Revelations. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and share and follow for more content.